Hello friends! Two weeks ago I made a video called I made prop hunting wow and it was a gameplay of uh, me and a couple of friends playing our brand new creation and in that video I only showed the gameplay but I did ask you guys if you would like to have a making of part of this video because I wasn't sure if people actually want to see that but uh, a lot of people actually do want to see that it turns out so here I am delivering on that promise. Now before we get started, I would like to say if you are actually interested in this kind of content, we are developing a game live on Twitch. Almost every day I'm working on it. Uh, it's on twitch.tv slash anbonywow and we are making a big spoilers. We're making Among Us in WoW. Uh, we're already almost a week into development. So far we've just been working on the map and uh, the difficult part is yet to come. I'll probably upload some of them as episodes on YouTube as well, maybe like a, a little series, like a weekly series. Uh, but anyway, back to the video at hand. Now back to a couple of weeks ago when I started working on Prop Hunt. This was actually initially a Guzu recommendation of a game and um, I actually for once kind of knew what I was doing. It didn't seem to be that difficult and looking back on it, yeah, this was probably one of the easiest projects. So. Uh, as with any other game, first thing I did was I imported the whole Gadgetsan map from WoW export tool into Blender and I wanted to import everything into Unreal Engine but I didn't want to have any duplicates. So after deleting a bunch of useless stuff we were left with the main kind of objects of the map and then it was time to drag and drop the whole thing and just like that we had the whole map into Unreal Engine 5 but I couldn't really use this because of the, a bunch of texture problems and the big problem was collision and also the fact that the whole map is basically one single object. So I just used this as a reference so I know where to place the object. Also the map was way too big out of the box so I had to re-import everything a little bit scaled. And now that I had the base of the map I could uh, take each object one by one and place them in the world where they're supposed to be on top of the the reference. So I started off with these big elements, these big huts and the walls and everything. I tried to adjust it as good as possible to uh, overlap my reference here. And the reason why I do that with each object one by one is so that I actually have collision on the objects themselves. You see I imported this house manually and now I can set custom collision for it and I actually don't run through the building. But once the main objects were done it was time to work on the landscape. Now the landscape I had to make myself from uh, from scratch essentially and just follow the reference of the original landscape. Luckily unlike uh, a lot of the other maps I worked on before this was pretty much flat with a few uh, a few hills here and there and we had a nice looking terrain way better than the original. Textures were a little bit different than the OG WoW textures, but you know what? Uh, artistic expression. We let that slide. There was one big problem, however. This uh, basement area, since the landscape goes over it, you couldn't exactly go inside on anymore. So we had to make some adjustments. So uh, I just made a giant hole <laughs> and I got the job done, you know? giant hole and uh, the basement was there. So now the basement was fully accessible and working pretty good uh, but there was sun coming through the ceiling so I realized we have a little bit of an issue here. Uh, you see since I made this giant hole um, if you look from the inside it looks good but uh, as soon as you go away yeah there's a giant hole everywhere. There's a massive hole in the back of this wall as well. That was not very aesthetic. So in classic game feature style, we simply covered it up with a big white plane. So now there was no sun coming inside the hole and uh, also there was no hole outside, but there was this giant plane. It's fine. Now in order to make the player become a 3D object, I was gonna make a specific actor um, that contains the information of the 3D model that the person wants to become instead of just having a 3D mesh in the world. Uh, an actor in Unreal Engine is essentially a thing. It can be an object, it can be a player. It, an actor is an entity. And this one was supposed to be very basic. It's just an empty actor with a, sta a 3D static mesh. A static mesh means a 3D object. I called it prop and I also created this static mesh variable that is exposed in the editor, which means that I can change the, the 3D model in the editor and it will transform this actor kind of into that 3D object I selected. And that would make it a lot easier then for me to 
scan if I'm actually hitting this actor when I was gonna do the transformation thing. So I just drag the actor in essentially and I pick whatever model I wanted and I was gonna do a little test here. So we pick a barrel and we can just turn into a barrel. Now it worked, but as you can see, the barrel was not in the origin point. It was really, really far away. And this was gonna be a big, big problem later on. And this was a great thing that I did it this way because I realized what the problem was. Uh, if I kept it like this, it was gonna be, you transform into an object, but the object would be super far away because the player would be in the middle. So what I had to do is, delete everything I imported, all the individual objects one by one, and I went back into Blender, I selected all of my prop objects, and I made sure to center them, and now I exported all of them again, this time they were properly centered, and this time my actor worked and everything was centered, and now began the long, very long process of placing each <laughs> object. This was probably the lengthiest part of the whole process, just putting each object in one by one, kind of adjusting it to its original position. But eventually, a few days later, we actually had a proper map. Everything was working good. Every one of these objects was a specific, like one of those actors I just made and uh, with the chosen static mesh. And we had a pretty good map. I, I think it looked pretty nice. And it was now time to make the character actually transform in the objects. Now this wasn't super hard to do, uh, for that we used a line trace by channel which is essentially a, an invisible line that has a start point and an end point and you, we just checked if that line intersects the specific actor I just made. And it was time to give it a shot, so this line, the red line you see, is the trace line we did and if it intersects an object, boom, we become the object. Simple, easy clap. Now, my object was kind of floating in space. Uh, not a big problem. It's because my pivot point was a bit too high. I made sure the pivot point is kind of on the floor. So uh, there you go. Actually worked out pretty good. And now you can become any object. And I realized you can't really aim. <laughs> If you want to kind of align yourself in a, in a, in a nice way, it's kind of difficult. So we had to have some, uh, some special keys just for that. Initially for the rotation, I wanted to have a special button. And once you hold that button, it rotates with the camera. And then when you let go, it kind of lets go. But uh, you could, it was kind of difficult, I felt like. And you could do some really weird things, like you could hide your object in the sky <laughs> or even worse you could go inside the floor you had way too much power so instead of having this we just added two new keybinds q and e that would just rotate the object on a z axis and that was it so now you could become any object and uh, you could press q or e and rotate so you can uh, position yourself uh, properly and then the object wouldn't turn when you rotate your camera so it was perfect next i wanted to make a system that makes it a little obvious what item you will become i was watching a jacksepticeye video and they have this cool outline of the object they're about to become so i followed a bunch of tutorials i found this one tutorial that uh, seemed really promising and it didn't exactly turn out okay. Whenever I would look at an object, it would just disappear. So the material would just go just invisible and it would just not come back. <laughs> but it would still work. You could still transform into that object. It would just, you point at it and it's just gone. <laughs> so you could just remove everything, but you could still become that object. So uh, I was definitely onto something. Honestly, I'm watching these clips a couple of weeks later and I don't even know how I managed to fix it eventually, but it looks like eventually I managed to figure out the highlight system. I can just look at all the objects and it highlights them. And now it was time for the big problem that usually happens in these games I make. <sighs> multiplayer. Is it gonna work in multiplayer? We tried it out, we load the game, I go up to an object, I transform into it and nothing happens. Oh no. So it looks like the character transforming into other objects is not getting replicated in multiplayer. Nice! Just kidding, super easy to fix. You actually just take a checkbox to uh, enable that specific part of the actor to replicate, which is the 3D objects, and now it works. It works in multiplayer. <laughs> Everyone can see the same object when they, someone transforms. Very easy fix for once. It was now time to work on the actual hunter and for that we picked this terrifying goblino from Gadgetsan. So we export this from WoW Export Tools again. We brought the goblin into Blender 
and we're gonna use Mixamo again to make some animations, but Mixamo requires the goblin to be in a T-pose. So we did a little bit of modeling work as well, and we ended up with a pretty decent looking T-pose. In Mixamo, we got a bunch of animations. We got where he's holding a gun, running with the gun, and I think that's it. I, I didn't bother with an actual jump animation or strafing or anything. <laughs> We just went with two animations, that's it. We apply all that to the goblin and we have a working hunter looking for props to hunt. Now he doesn't have a weapon yet and I also figured that this uh, third person POV for the hunter doesn't feel right. We really wanted to get in close and personal to find those props. So to make it a first person it's super easy, you just bring the camera in closer into his head and you have a first person, very nice. So we gave him a little gun and a disaster. Look how terrifying that is. <laughs> I forgot to change the setting, so my mouse wasn't rotating the actor anymore, it was just rotating the camera. But that was a very easy fix. You just tick this checkbox, and there we go. Now we have a kind of functional first person goblino. Still a little problem looking up and down, but we can definitely fix that. You can see the little toes there. After fixing that, it was time to work on the actual gun. And for that, we used a arrow here just as a reference to know where the bullets are supposed to be coming out from. And we did the same thing as we did for the props where you do a line trace that starts from the point of the arrow and it goes forward. And it's essentially like hit scan. If something intersects that line, you can see the line here. If something intersects the line, you shoot it. Uh, as you can see, it's not exactly going straight. That's because the gun is a little tilted. So for that we used the little trick that is used in a lot of first person games, which is essentially instead of having a line trace go from the weapon forward, you have a line trace go from the center of the camera forward. So and then you have just a fake animation on the gun, but the trace itself is done from the point of the camera straight forward. And that way it kind of matches the crosshair in the middle of the screen. And now it was time to add a little bit of fluff, so a little bit of fire to these torches. This is maybe a, a little bit much, so we made it bigger. <laughs> we added some fires to these candles here, and we also made a little explosion effect on the gun when you shoot. And with everything else done, it was time to work on the actual hit system to make sure uh, you hit when you hit someone, something happens. So I had this blood splash effect that I made myself. Very nice looking blood splash. I followed the tutorial, of course. And we made it so that whenever you're hitting a prop, that's a player, you get the blood splash, uh, Some the prop loses HP, and <laughs> you could just kind of blast it first. There was no cooldown on the gun. You could absolutely demolish it. So, But everything worked well. I was pretty happy with the result. You couldn't shoot through the walls, uh, but if you shot directly at the prop, it was working great. Now, there was one big problem with this shooting system, which... I don't know how I didn't realize it at the time, but if the client was shooting, you can see here the client was also kind of spurging out when he was strafing. I, I managed to fix that eventually. Uh, but on the client side, there would be the, the shooting was inaccurate. You see, on the client side, I, I hit it, but on the server, I didn't. And again, and I don't know how I, I missed this when I was testing it, but if you remember my last video, there was a moment when Nomsen was shooting me directly. And it wouldn't register. Am I immune the, or something? The, I'm gonna explore while you're here, okay? What are you? What are you? Break wow. move. I shot that. Wait, it's not working. Why shoot it? Oh. Wait, you're immune. Ah. Bon is cheating out. again. We fixed that now in Prop Hunt 2.0. I'm gonna jump in the editor in a second and show you. But we fixed this by making sure that it's not the server that determines whether or not you hit something. It's the actual client shooting. So if I'm the client and I'm shooting a prop. If I, it looks like I hit it on my screen, then I just tell the server, yo, I hit this person. And then the server just trusts me. At this point, I kind of stopped recording the making off process uh, because I figured maybe people don't even care about it and I kind of just wanted to finish it. So for the rest of it, I'm just gonna show you a little bit, a couple of weeks after what else we did. So for the actual hunter, we got a little uh, system here where you have a, you have your normal hit which there's a scan, the line, that's the, the, the tracing. And we also have a right click because it was kind of, you know, we are a bunch of WoW players and we kind of suck at aiming. So I figured if you have a small object running around, it would be nice to have a shotgun. Shotgun, there's a lot of random traces in a cone and it's on a 10 second cooldown. As you can see right there in the bottom right, it like recharges. 
and we also have a nice little robot it's, uh, it's loading <laughs> we have a little robot that scans the area you see this giant red circle this is the area it scans and let me add a prop into the level real fast there's a prop he can turn into something else and if we put a robot next to him The area, the thing turns red and it's, it, it warns you, you know, there's someone there and we can just shoot him. Uh, it's, it's like rendering the blood. There it is. We also have a little special thing for the props as well. So this is the prop now. You start off as a <laughs> black and white T-pose goblin. And again, you can just go to any object. You can click it. You become the object, like I said. You can use Q and E to rotate. And this was a really fun game to play. We also have an AOE route. We press R, there's no one around, so it just traces. It's the same system where it makes a tracing, makes a giant sphere, and if there's any hunters, it puts your root on cooldown and it roots them. And I thought that that was great. Other than this, uh, a couple of things I can show you are uh, maybe a few Easter eggs and a brand new map that we made. And I'm going to upload another video of this brand new map that we played. This is uh, <laughs> Goldshire. I think it looks so much nicer than the first one this house took a really long time to put every single object in place if you go inside you'll see that oof there's a lot of content here <laughs> but the whole process was the same it just took forever to take every single object and place it here you know you can become this thing you can become a barrel you can even become a painting we have this forge here with a bunch of items inside again this whole thing was kind of easy to make you can even become a giant tree you know good luck hiding is this this was definitely one of the most fun projects i've worked on also one of the easiest one to make and that was it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed also before we end the video obligatory dog pov there he is there's jackie he's really happy he wants to say hi can you give me a good outro <laughs> say something for the outro wow <laughs> Amazing.